there it is. Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. So this week I've come to Almeria in southern Spain and we're staying in a town called Mojaca. Now this isn't a region that I've been to before but a lot of my friends uh, have told me that it's a great place to ride and also a lot of pro teams use it for training in winter as well. So I thought I'd come here and show it to you. A company called Velo Holes offered to uh, provide us with accommodation and also show us around the area which is really cool. So we'll put a link uh, down in the description below to Velo Holes because they help people come out here and organise holidays for people and it's certain uh, training camps. So yeah, really cool. Cheers. I've come out here also with Yanto Barker, ex-professional and founder of Le Col because we're going to be making some other videos about descending and cornering and stuff like that so stay tuned for those because they're going to be coming out so Yanto's been out here before when he was with One Pro Cycling and also Lotto Yumbo come out here and the Movistar team but it's kind of a secret area not a lot of people come here and it's kind of a secret area that the pros come to train because the roads are said to be really good so we're going to go check them out So how to get to this area? Well, we flew into Alicante, but there's also other airports you can use. We used that just because it was quite easy for us to get to from uh, Gatwick, and the flight's pretty cheap. It was sort of 60 to 90 pounds return we saw you could, sort of, you could get, and then you can add a bike box onto that quite easily with people like EasyJet, so that's cool. But Almeria is also a local airport that you could fly to, and also Mercia as well is another option. And again, there's lots of low cost flight options you can pick. Um, and then once you get there, car hire's not too expensive. But you know, if you go with someone like Velo Holes, then they can arrange to pick you up at the airport, which is pretty cool. Or you could arrange a transfer. One thing that's quite funny though is, well, yeah, we're staying in like Mahaka, and uh, it's spelt very similar to Mallorca, but like it's like Moyoka. <laughs> and apparently. Uh, we've been told by some locals that people have sometimes booked a package deal holiday and just sort of gone like open the brochure up and gone mm -hmm. and then like gone oh, I'll go there and like sort of misread it turned up and gone like so uh, how'd you get to the other side of the island then <laughs> it's like they think they're in New York so where to stay if you come here well there's a lot of options um, you can choose from sort of villas and self-catered accommodation but also hotels so a hotel we'd probably recommend is the Marina Player Hotel in Mojaca. And the reason for this is that it caters for cyclists very well. So Lotto Yumbo use that hotel and Movistar have used that hotel. And because of this, the hotel gets cyclists. They're not worried about you putting your bike in your room and stuff like that. And then the things like downstairs, they have uh, bike washing facilities and sort of maintenance facilities and things like that. So, that's really good and they sort of understand the things that cyclists want to eat so you know that makes it a, a really good option um, I'd recommend that but there's also loads of self catered options as well such as I mean look at all these villas over here a lot of these are villas that you can rent and with amazing sea views and um, you know Velo Holes actually can custom customize trips so we're staying in a villa but depending on your needs they can sort you out in a hotel and, and things like that as well uh, so yeah, it's all pretty cool. Plenty of options. We're just on the Vela Fique climb now. What do you reckon this climb you have to? It's a bit of a monster. It's good, isn't it? It's steep at the bottom. Are you, because uh, you've, you've definitely ridden all of it, haven't you, just now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
just behind nibbly holes. Yeah, the road surface is perfect. It's warm, sun's out, clear blue sky. And the best thing though, there's been one car. One car has come past us in the whole 40 minutes or so we've been climbing up here, which is, that's amazing. I can't think of anywhere where I've done that on a climb of this quality with this good road surface and only seen one car. Look at that view. Mega. Oh, I've pressed record. I was really like impressed with the Velofique climb. Um, you know, sort of 18 kilometers long of, of climbing. It's been used in the Vuelta a España as a summit finish uh, a couple of times. So 2009, rider Hagedal went up there. And in 2017, last year, um, Miguel Angel Lopez won up there and beat Chris Froome by sort of 14 seconds, I believe. And it's a climb that's often compared to Alpe d'Huez because it contains a similar sort of number of switchbacks. It's sort of a switchback heaven climb. Um, and it's a similar sort of length and similar sort of elevation gain and similar sort of gradient. I actually prefer it to Alpe d'Huez. Um, and the reason for that is it's just that the road surface is very good quality the whole way up. Like, surprising for such a remote and quiet road. But it's just the fact that it's so quiet and still. I notice it when we're filming as well. Because in the UK, we often have to stop filming and do another take because a car appears in the background or something like that. But it's so easy here and I don't know. It reminds me of that uh, scene in Wayne's World when they're trying to play street hockey and it's constantly like, car, car, game on. Well, yeah, there's none of that here. <laughs> it's great. Another climb that we've done in the last few days a couple of times is this Bida climb. Oh, it's about 30 minutes long. There are a few ramps of sort of 10 to 15% in there, but it averages 5%. But it's a great climb for training. And, and it's just, again, another really quiet road that just with loads of nice corners and switchbacks and great road surface. And I mean, I've not had a chance to, to ride all the climbs around here, but that's because there's just a lot you really are sort of spoiled for choice. There's a lot of it's a surprisingly hilly area. That, that is some serious money shot. So this area is characterized by sort of rugged coastlines and also a variety of terrain so you've got mountains and loads of good climbs and good sort of flat roads but also deserts apparently Europe's only mainland desert the Tab Tabernus desert is, is located here as well but a lot of spaghetti westerns and sort of films have been shot here because of the landscape's resemblance to the you know south of uh, southwestern sort of desert areas in America uh, so things like Lawrence of Arabia um, and also Once Upon a Time in the West and those sorts of films were shot here, which is pretty cool. That buzzing, by the way, if you can hear it in the background, it's a drone. with the Blues Brothers. This cafe stops go, pretty good. Yeah. So having spent a few days here now, I am, I'm gonna summarize by giving you a list of what I think to be the advantages of this area. So, the first thing is and I keep saying it, is how quiet this place is. I can't understate that enough as a big advantage. Because, you know, you go to Mallorca, especially in the busy times, around April and May, and riding up an amazing road like Sacalobra can be a bit sort of an anti-climax because you're having to stop behind car traffic, but also, you know, there's so many other cyclists there as well. Um, 
Whereas here, it, it's much nicer to be on incredibly quiet roads. Another advantage is the variety of terrain. If you don't want to do just climbs, there's plenty of flat ride options as well. There's great coastal roads, but you know, there's climbs to do your efforts on and there's rolling terrain. You know, that's important because people don't always want to ride just climbs all the time. The other reason to come here is the climate. So in winter, the temperature ranges from sort of 15 to 22 degrees and averages 18 degrees all the way through winter and the rainfall is ridiculously low so they get 20 days of rain a year here which is absolutely tiny although uh, having spoken to velo holes as well i would recommend that it's not the best destination to come to in the summer months uh, and the reason for that is it gets incredibly hot you know 30 40 plus degrees you can get here and you know it gets to the point where it's probably a little bit too hot for cycling in sort of you know july and august so probably don't come then on to the bit you've all been waiting for competition time so uh, last week's competition was a chance to win this the new cycling weekly le col kit um and Thanks for all your entries as usual. I also did quite enjoy the comments about Rupert looking sort of like a baby Wolverine. Keep those coming, they're great. Uh, <laughs> the winning comment um, I'm gonna give to Jack Eaton, who wrote that the Canyon SRAM women's team jersey. I never wanted to wear women's clothing until I saw them. Well, you say that Jack, but no, no I'm only kidding. Uh, no, I agree with you. I think it's great. I love that kit. And, you know, I think anything to see the growth of women's cycling is great. And I'm all for greater parity in the sport. And I love the way that they designed that kit. So I don't know if you know, but they used loads of different color, colored like sort of sellotape and overlaid loads of different tape and then started cutting into it and stuff to get that pattern. Um, and I, I love it. I think it looks really great. And um, so that's cool. So I've decided to win that. So let us know your details. We'll put the email in the description. Just send that back and we'll send you your prize. So well done. So this week is actually a double prize giveaway because Paris Roubaix just happened, which means I can give away the prize for the person who correctly predicted the winner first in the comments section. And that was Guido de Vries, who wrote Sargon will win. So, you know, I, yeah, you've correctly predicted the future, get in contact and we'll send you your prize. So well done, Guido. Um, as for this week's competition, um, what I would like to do is for you to give me your suggestions in the comments section below of amazing cycling destinations that you feel are not as well known about as they should be. Places that are really good but pretty underrated um, and therefore perhaps not that well known about but deserve more uh, cycling recognition. So the best comment um, will win a prize and that prize is this which is a really cool Le Col Aqua Zero jersey. It's a great bit of kit. I've been wearing it recently and it's sort of got a good good water repellency on it and breathes really nicely and fits really good. So yeah, just a comment with that. And I think this is also really cool because I think with your answers it could be a really good thing to make a compilation video of I don't know something like the 10 best sort of underrated cycling destinations. So I'll start the list off with this with this place that we've been to in this vlog. Um, this part of Spain is, is cracking, uh, the sort of, yeah, Almeria uh, region. But let me know yours. And until then, see you next week. This is good, I've got, I've got you top to toe. Just not going very fast.